Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Talk About Sleep, your favorite channel and mine. Here's the book. You know I got to throw that up there. The Amazon link to that is in the description box down below. Second book is almost there. So keep, I'll keep, uh, keep you guys posted on that. As we get to 1,000 subscribers, one lucky person at random will get a signed copy of this, this book, at random. But you got to be in it to win it, so subscribe. Thank you for everybody. The last month or so, as we asked questions, you've been, you know, uh, interacting. It's great. So keep it up. End of this month, we'll do the same thing. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Like I said, once a month, I will answer them. <laughs> um, and just as I always say, these videos are for education only. Okay. So with that being said, let's talk about CPAP, something I haven't talked about in a while. Now, sleep apnea, right? What is that? <clears throat> I talk about that in the channel, though not so much recently. It's obstructive sleep apnea, which is back here where the tongue sits. Essentially what happens is the airway gets smaller back here, right? So right now when we're awake, my brain is telling my muscles to stay where they are. So the airway back here is wide open. When we fall asleep, the muscles on our body relax head to toe. So the upper airway, right? The tongue, the soft tissue, when this relaxes, it has a tendency to kind of fall together. Okay, especially when we're on our back. Right? Gravity pulls the tongue backwards. Now, that's all well and good. Some people, because of genetics or because of being a man or because of being overweight or because of alcohol, because of certain other things, some people, the airspace gets really small. Okay, When it gets down to this, you're still able to breathe in and out, but everything kind of vibrates back there. And that vibration is what sleep, snoring is. Okay, Snoring is just vibration of tissue. You know, If you ever watch cartoons, that little uvula that hangs in the back of the throat, that gets knocked around back there, and that's where snoring comes from. Snoring doesn't hurt you. It annoys everybody else, right? We care about the next step, which is sleep apnea. So awake, asleep, snoring, sleep apnea. All right. So we know sleep apnea is not good for us. It puts us into a state where the sleep that we get becomes very chopped up. The body is constantly in a state of like trying to almost respond as if you're choking, right? So blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up, and these things can have cardiovascular consequences down the road, okay? So untreated sleep apnea can lead to heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure problems, strokes, etc. okay? So if we have it, especially if it's severe, all right, which means that there's more than 30 stoppages of breathing per hour, especially if it's severe, we want to make sure we're taking care of it. Now, the title of this video is, what do I do if I don't feel better with CPAP? Well, that happens every now and then. So when we put CPAP on patients, right, which is continuous positive airway pressure, it's a mask, goes over the nose or in the nostrils, okay? And what happens is this pressurized air that comes in goes all the way down to the back of the throat and it forces the airway open, right? So what you're doing there is you're reversing the stoppages, the blockages, okay? And as a result of that, in theory, the sleep becomes more continuous, more regular, and the person gets deeper sleep, and you know, it, the body responds in a positive way. Okay, you'll see actually people with sleep apnea they have what's called non-dipping. So what happens is the blood pressure is what it is up here, and then when we go to bed, the blood pressure dips, and then it kind of rises up again. Okay, when, when somebody has sleep apnea, that doesn't happen. We put CPAP on them, and all of a sudden this starts dipping again, which is a good thing. Okay. So we know that, sleep, that, that CPAP is affecting the cardiovascular system in a positive way. And especially if you have a severe case, most people will say, you know, I feel better. I feel better with this. My sleep was, was garbage prior to this. Now it's like I'm sleeping through the night. I'm dreaming more. You know, I'm getting more REM sleep. I'm, I'm just, I feel like my, my, I'm more energetic in the morning, right? But not everybody has that. And what I've been seeing recently, for whatever reason, is some patients coming to me and saying, look, I don't think the CPAP is working for me. Now, what that, that's a kind of a loaded term. Um, the CPAPs these days is pretty cool. They actually record how the person is doing at home. So we can actually compare during the sleep test how many stoppages of breathing they have. And the CPAP actually lets us know how it's doing now, right? So let's say th more than 30 per hour is severe, less than five per hour is normal, and the CPAP can give us that information. So when somebody comes to me and says, look, I don't think the CPAP is working, we take a look at the data, and what it shows is that their apnea number is down to one or so, which is you know totally normal. So I say, look, it is working for you. It's definitely doing good things for you, and your body is 
happy with this, but you may not feel better, okay? And that's not a common thing, but it does happen, and it's important to know, all right? Well, the way I, the way I kind of describe it to patients is this, is like, if you have high blood pressure, right? You take a blood pressure pill. You're not going to feel better from that. You know, your body, you're not going to say, oh, you know, I, I, I feel my blood pressure is lowered now and I feel great. It doesn't work that way. But you know you have to take this because you don't want to have a heart attack 10 years down the road. CPAP is the exact, exact same way. Now, if you happen to feel better, if your sleep is, you know, becomes from a, a 1 to a 10, you know, you'll be high five and then you'll be very happy to continue CPAP. But that doesn't always happen. So it's important to know that there is that, that, that distinction between what the CPAP is doing for me and how do I feel. The other thing to mention is not everybody is tired, right? So sleep apnea is a very common condition. And, you know, most people, like I said, have chopped up sleep and they feel like garbage the next day. But not everybody does. And if they're starting from that place where they're not that impaired, not they're tired, the CPAP may not help with that. Okay. But again, it's helping the health. And that's what's important. That's what's most important. Okay, so if there's any questions on this, drop them in the comment section down below. Um, and uh, be sure to subscribe, share this with your friends and family. Please like the video, of course, if you like it. And uh, until next time, everybody, sleep well.